It's a word that I'm using a lot tonight, but it's magical. And it really is, one, it's just amazing to be here at the Olivier's, but after the year, two years we've had, the pandemic, finally theatre is open and it's just special to be here in a room together, in a very grand, beautiful room, but to be here celebrating theatre together. It's, it's magical. It's an honour. I'm excited. I'm nervous. And I keep saying this, but I never thought I'd ever be here in my life. So it is a real honour. I feel really lucky and I'm happy to be here. I've, I've never been here and I know what it is and what it's like, but I didn't expect it to be quite as cool as this and see everyone, all my friends dressed up and all people from the other casts and companies. It's, it's a real celebration. It's incredible. So we came out just after lockdown. We were one of the first shows out and it, it kind of feels appropriate to be a ghost story coming back after that. And th this is the afterlife. This is us coming back and enjoying theatre again. And so, yeah, I mean, it's amazing to be here and it feels like you can feel the excitement in the air. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a shock, really. Yeah. Like you were saying, Blake, to kind of, you know, a few months ago, starting off rehearsal, what was our first day? First day was Fleming in a Cup for COVID protocols. Yes. That was We were literally taught how to Flem in a Cup. Yes. <laughs> so that was great, and I don't think any of us expected that it would no. end up here. No. no. But it's brilliant to be here. It's wonderful. I think getting to see the other, the yeah. other shows yeah. perform is going to yeah. be really nice. Like a little snapshot of everyone's uh, presenting everyone's show is going to be really cool. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And it's really nice to get an opportunity to celebrate theatre again. It's been a good couple of years since we've been able Absolutely. to do this properly. And now, as you can see around you, the colours and the, everyone's out. It's great to be doing this. We, we did a tech yesterday and I got goosebumps walking out onto the stage. It's just an amazing yeah. venue. And I've never actually been to the Royal Albert Hall before, so this is like a very exciting first time. You get to perform? Yeah. I'm most looking forward to seeing people get up and just be celebrated. We haven't had a chance to do that in person in a while, and it's great that we can get out and do that together again. It's also really amazing to have been asked to be here to represent our show, Get Up Stand Up. Absolutely. It's just really surreal. Like after so long of just sort of being trapped in your house doing not much, it's, it's really, really surreal to be out. But yeah, it's amazing. Really proud of us. Why were you trapped in your house? You had shows to do. <laughs> she should have been not doing recently. shows every evening. <laughs> Right now, it's surreal, just exciting. I'm taking deep breaths and just trying to really absorb it all and soak it in. So I'm, I'm I mean, I'm, I can't quite believe I'm here. <laughs> it's been, it's been gorgeous. Um, you know, after so many years of having theatre effectively shut down, uh, to be amongst your people, amongst your community, it's, it's everything. It feels like, it really feels like we're back. It, it feels amazing. You know, this, this show's had such a journey from. Uh, Edinburgh in 2017, um, all the way here to the Olivier's in 2022. It's it's incredible, and what a night for the theatre to come back. First Olivier's in three years, so yeah, it's amazing. It, it's, it feels incredible because theatre is all about live, the live experience and the collective experience, and you have to share it with people. So, you know, apart from the fact that it's very glamorous and all uh, bells and whistles, I find it quite moving. Like, I, I, I just to see lighting designers, costume designers, set designers that I really admire and love all together having survived the worst period in modern times for theatre. It's great. I think it's a really important symbol. I think it's because it's a mix of, it's not just here's the film on stage with songs. It's a real mix of stagecraft, unbelievable performances and uh, music that gets you up out of your seat. And it's, it's the best thing about it is we get to see behind the MD sort of five or six seats and seeing adults who love the film, who saw it in 1985 with their kids who have never seen it, and then something happens at the end and they both turn to each other simultaneously and go, that's what life theatre is about. That's the best thing about the show and like, that's why it's successful. Um, it's really, really validating. I mean, you know, we, we were the first new show to open in the West End uh, after the pandemic and uh, that felt in itself a huge privilege and an enormous joy to be able to bring theatre back to people after so long. Um, so to be recognised with a nomination for Best New Play is sort of the icing on the cake for us, really. Yeah. It was brilliant. It was my first theatre job um, after two years of kind of not being legally allowed to do it. So it was it was special for all sorts of reasons. And I think um, three of the cast were the same. One one was a new uh, member, but the creative team as well. It was it was very nostalgic, but also uh, the play. We were reminded of how relevant it was in a world that is still uh, you know pretty traumatic for a lot of people. So I'm um, yeah grateful to the Kiln for for choosing to program it again and um, hopefully serving a, a much bigger purpose too. It was a massive surprise. Like I don't think any of us were expecting it. No, no, no. But it's lovely because it's a it's a team thing that yeah. we're doing. So to yeah. recognise all of us as one, it, yeah. it's been quite lovely. Yeah, it was all or nothing, really, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Went then to the Ambassadors Theatre and it and it did very well in the midst of a pandemic. You know, it was extended and and now we've got this nomination. I'm so thrilled. There was a really 
concerted effort to make sure that we made a space that was safe and accepting and joyous and I think that we carried that through like all the way through um, I'm so proud to have been a part of it there's just a, a, they're, they're just an amazing group of people and um, uh, that show has been I guess in my psyche for as long as I've sort of known what a musical is and I'd seen the show a lot um, and I never expected to have been a part of it and to have been a part of it in the way that I was and um, Frex and Tom and Julia and, and, and Jen and, and the whole creative team, they poured so much of themselves into it and, and, and allowed us to bring ourselves in, into that world and we weren't, we weren't restricted to sort of what had come before and it felt very, it feels still very, feels really relevant to now as I'm sure you can imagine so um, I'm, I'm really chuffed to have been a part of it. It was like the first play that the park had done post lockdown and the fact that we were just even rehearsing for a play and I think we were all slightly thinking God someone's bound mm. to get Covid or something yeah, at some yeah, point yeah. and the show's yeah. gonna stop or we're gonna have to bring in like a last minute replacement and we never did no, we got we through the whole thing no problems we were like PCRing all yeah, the time yeah, and everything yeah. and we got through it and that was just a real privilege to be on stage that early after the lockdowns I, I, I loved every minute of that I really did and these guys were phenomenal to work with there was a really dark period where I wasn't sure whether we were going to get a chance to do it because no theatres were open, it was closed and we, we kept pushing it back, you know, um, and actually I didn't believe we were going to do it until our first preview. That's when I was like, oh, we're actually doing this for real, for real, you know, just because of the um, hurdles, you know, the obstacles along the way. And so, um, and so, yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's really amazing, you know, but also I'm, I'm sure everybody here knows it, but just putting on work in a pandemic, I mean, the actual work on stage, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, there's so much that goes on behind, you know, um, but uh, it's, it's made me extra proud of everyone in our industry and what we do. Because it's a, show all, it's a show all about community and getting people together and enjoying music and embracing your community, so it felt, felt really good to be doing that after such a long time of being in isolation and all you know, cooped up. When we dreamed up the idea of this multicast production of Constellations, it was in the depths of lockdown and getting people to invest and commit and get behind the idea was sort of almost impossible, but people did because they loved that play and we wanted to be back and we hope that the project could help open the West End. So to be here, to celebrate that after it happened and it works, it's beautiful. The sort of strange and beautiful thing about it was that we sort of, we only crossed paths with each other. I saw Anna and Chris's final performance. Well, actually we crossed paths more than we attended because I performed a show with Chris. Um, that was very unexpected, but brilliant. But um, to, to, to have come together in that way and to have fought for, for Michael and everyone at the Donmar um, and Eleanor and Nico Burns um, to, 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 to have had this sort of idea to sort of something that was really innovative and a way to really bring audiences in and it's, it's, it, I think it was a testament to Nick Kane's play because the themes are so universal and just speak true to something that is so human so the fact that we were able to place it on so many different people from so many different walks of life um, I think that's it, 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 it attracted a lot of attention and and you know for, 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 for all the right reasons I think I mean it's a classic it's a it's a beautiful show Kathleen Marshall has done such a beautiful job on this um, it's it's all of those elements the lighting the costumes the, the music the orchestrations you know everything that has been nominated for is brilliant and I remember seeing it last uh, at the Barbican at the end of last summer and it just felt like the right time we'd all had a bit of a tough time and what you wanted from the theatre is to go and feel something and laugh and smile and be carried away for a couple of hours and that's exactly what this show does and I can't wait to be part of it and just get on there and do it. <laughs> I can't wait really to get back into rehearsals and just watch the play kind of continue and, and grow and kind of you know it's reaching so many people I, that's the nice thing for me actually building a community around it and like you were saying about not seeing the ending coming but there's this kind of like shh, don't tell community and you want to go and tell other people to come and see the play so you can talk about it with them.
I loved this show already, but seeing what it's meant to people, especially like you say, after what we've been through, has made it somehow mean even more to me because that's what it's all about. That's the whole reason you make work and the whole reason you get out of bed in the morning and, and go and do that work is to make people feel like that. And yeah, it's, it's the biggest privilege of my professional life, I think, to have done this. And Sunday matinees, I don't know why, but it reminds me of sort of like a church service, like a, if you went to a, like a Pentecostal yes. church. Sunday service. For me, Sunday service, every single Sunday at Get Up Stand Up is the place to be. It Preach. feels like church. It's amazing and nobody can beat it. I oh, mean. <laughs> well, we started creating it about seven years ago, uh, but they changed the categories of the awards, so now it's it's it can be put forward for something which is exciting. Beck designed it, and it's based on a Julia Donaldson book. Of course the kids love it. It's the princess story and everything like that. But adults love it because it's not the princess story. It's it's clever and it's there's really complex adult emotions that Elsa is experiencing, anxiety and and we really we really delve into that a lot more in in the musical than in the film with songs like Monster and you really see what she's battling. But I think there is something in there for everybody because kids want to be Elsa and Anna, but adults also relate to the story. Um, and it's a beautiful story. The cast were the most extraordinary bunch of people I've ever worked with. And I think that's probably what I'll take away from it more than anything. Kids who'd never been on stage before, uh, straight out of drama school. Um, yeah, it was an exciting, exciting time. I think it operates on so many different levels. So it's gorgeous if you see it. Uh, the visuals are extraordinary. The design of the tiger, like you mentioned, the, the set design, the video projection, the lighting, um, you know, and then we've got all these other elements, music, sound. But the story is an enduring story. I mean, Jan Martel's book is, is a classic, right? A modern classic. And this, this story of shipwreck and survival and the cost of it and what, what helps you get through a really tough time and I think we've all been through a really tough time so it, it, it corresponds on so many levels that I think this is a book that will go on and on and a play hopefully. <laughs> well the book is famous, the movie was famous so people kind of know the story and they, the people who know it they come to watch how it's done on stage right so we've all already got a big fan base. Um, and then the story relates because it's about isolation, isn't it, man? Okay. And we've been isolating for a long time now, you know? Um, and uh, so there is a lot to relate to in this play. Well, in, in some ways, it's the understudies because um, we each of us had to go off, the three main actors had to go off for, for, for periods of time while we had COVID. And they came in and did such a tremendous job, kept, kept the show going. Um, that I just feel incredibly grateful and, and proud of the work that they did. Closing night was insane, wasn't it? It was absolutely insane. I think the anticipation for us coming back in October is crazy, but closing night was amazing. Uh, do you know what? Any time we get to sing, all nine of us on stage get to sing, and everyone's just like super captivated by what they're seeing, it's amazing, but closing night was my personal yeah. favourite moment. Yeah. Two women in the lead, supporting each other, loving each other, having each other's back, it's a special message and I, I, me and Steph both feel so lucky to be giving that message to a young audience. Oh, I mean honestly it is, it's like nothing else I've ever experienced. It's just having a sister with me through all of this has been amazing and sisterhood is at the heart of the story so it's, I feel so, so, so privileged to share the stage with Samantha Barks every night. Getting together, the, the theatre community coming together after, you know, such a torrid couple of years and I think just this celebration of theatre, live theatre, it's different. It leaves you feeling different when you leave that theatre and I think that's what I'm most excited about, seeing the smiles on people's faces, like you said, a chance to dress up and just feel good and that's what I'm most excited about.